My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my God and Angel, intercede for me. Today I must start this reflection with a strict prohibition. Mothers-in-law are banned from listening to this meditation. Of course we have people of all ages who pray with 10 minutes with Jesus, lots of young people, but also people of other ages too, including mothers-in-law. Well, mothers-in-law, I'm telling you, today you're banned. Now you might say, well, how do you know if I listen or not? How are you going to find out? Well, of course, 10 minutes with Jesus has a highly developed surveillance system and we know obviously everything about you and everything you do. Google has nothing on us. So should any mother-in-law listen to this meditation, we will find out. For repeated infractions, extreme punishments will be applied, including the worst of all. Not just listening to one of my meditations, but two of them. Well, forgive me for this silly joke, but I think it also makes the point that in our prayer with Jesus, we can joke and play around. Prayer doesn't have to be stern and solemn, We can have fun with you, Jesus. We can joke when it's time to joke and be serious when it's time to be serious. But my friend, you might ask me, why do I talk about mothers-in-law? Well, because in today's Gospel, we see our Lord Jesus curing a mother-in-law, precisely the mother-in-law of Simon, Simon Peter. We read, And he arose and left the synagogue and entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she rose and served them. Now, any mother-in-law listening might say, ha, that's typical. We mothers-in-law get abused and insulted, and yet what happens here always happens. Peter's mother-in-law isn't given any time to rest. As soon as she's cured, she's back on her feet serving. Yeah, lots of abuse, but we're the ones who are always doing the work. Perhaps that's true. But as mother-in-laws are so good, particularly mothers-in-law who pray with 10 minutes for the Jesus, I thought you wouldn't mind if I told you a couple of my favourite mothers-in-law jokes. Here's one. What's the punishment for bigamy? two mothers-in-law. One man is talking to his friend and he said, I took my dog to the vet today because it bit my mother-in-law. The other one asked, did you put it to sleep? No, the first one replied, I had its teeth sharpened. A last one, I always know when it's the mother-in-law knocking at the door because the mice start throwing themselves on the traps. But we could perhaps invent another mother-in-law joke based on today's gospel episode. What's the greatest proof that Jesus could love absolutely everyone? He even cured a mother-in-law. Well, end of silliness. Here, Lord Jesus, what you're really doing is showing us how much you love the family and how much all family relations matter to you. And yes, joking apart, We do have to love everyone in our family and be peacemakers to do all we can to soothe and overcome fevers. Just as Jesus cured the fever of Simon's mother-in-law. Now of course there are many types of fevers both physical and spiritual. They can take many forms. It can be the fever of a prejudice. And yes, it could be someone in the family who has a prejudice against you. But there could be other fevers too. A family has a fever for material wealth, to get on with the Joneses as we say, in other words, to be accepted in a particular social class. There are so many fevers. There can be fevers of bigotry, of prejudice, of false ambitions. No, Jesus, you don't want us to have these fevers. You want us to be 
peacemakers in our families too to overcome these fevers? And there's a good question. There's a good point of examination. Do we promote peace in our family? Or rather, do we cause fevers or even worse, light fires? And if there are feuds in your family, the worst form of fevers, then go to Jesus, the Prince of Peace, and to Our Lady, Queen of Peace, to end these feuds. Christian families can't be feuding. That's counter-witness. That's anti-witness. And more specifically, if someone in your family has something against you, don't return hate for hate, or spite for spite, or sarcastic remark for sarcastic remark, or coldness for coldness. Respond with prayer and as much love as you can muster. There are all sorts of ways to overcome fevers in a family. Yes, certainly, above all, prayer. But also perhaps a patient ear, even if someone's going on or nagging. The effort to smile. A bouquet of flowers. A box of chocolates. Picking up the phone to reach out to somebody. And maybe those who are critical of us, who have something against us, maybe even the mother-in-law, maybe they're right in some of their criticisms and concerns about us. Maybe they're right to think that we're reckless or irresponsible or spend too much or that we don't treat their daughter or their son, your wife, your husband, properly. Maybe there's things there we need to learn and take on board. Jesus, help us to be able to learn even from people's hostility towards us. Only you, Lord, are the innocent victim. We're not innocent. None of the rest of us are totally innocent. Sometimes we accuse others of being narrow, but we're the narrow ones. We're the ones at fault. All sorts of differences can be overcome. Rather than criticising and blaming others, let's, first of all, judge ourselves, accuse ourselves, and then reach out to others. All sorts of gulfs can be bridged. I was always surprised how, speaking of mothers-in-law, how my granny, uh, my mum's mum, got on so well with my dad. Now, humanly speaking, they had every reason to not get on well, not get on well. My dad was from quite a poor background in Liverpool of Welsh parents. He did boxing. He loved sports. He was a soldier, a bit of an adventurer, a merchant, a shopkeeper in the end. A security guy did all sorts of things from a Protestant background. My granny, however, was a Swiss Jewess interested in antiques and lace. Her family wasn't rich, but it was relatively comfortable and certainly from quite a refined continental background. And yet somehow the two got on great. It just shows that with a bit of effort, divisions can be overcome. Gulfs can be bridged. But let's go back to the Gospel. And we read, And when it was day, Jesus departed and went into a lonely place. And the people sought him and came to him and would have kept him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, for I was sent for this purpose. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Jesus, first of all, we see you praying. You go to that lonely place. You have power to cure, to cast out demons because of your life within. From your deep inner peace, your relationship with your Father God, from your own, as it were, interior health, you can cure the fevers and diseases of others. To bring peace to our family, we must find these lonely places to pray, just as we're doing now, but even more so, not just once a day with ten minutes with Jesus, more at other times too. And then, Lord, your example. You don't just pray for the sake of your own comfort. Your prayer is not a refuge. It's not an escape from people's problems. Here we see you refusing to stay in one place. That would be too comfortable. You don't want celebrity status in some nice, easy village. Because you've come to serve all, your prayer precisely leads you to complicate your life, to go to the other towns, to other problems, to other needs. Prayer, yes, brings peace to our family, to our environment, but it doesn't necessarily give us a peaceful life. 
Yes, we'll have deep interior peace from our prayer, but it leads us to complicate our lives, to reach out to others, wherever they may be, whoever they may be, even that difficult mother-in-law. Obviously, Our Lady is not mother-in-law to anyone. Rather, she is truly mother to all. Going to Our Lady will have a bigger heart, able to love even those we might not find lovable at first. Dearest Mother, from you we want to learn to have a heart open to all that doesn't make exceptions. Mother, win for us a heart like yours, a heart that beats to its full capacity, full of the oxygen of love. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my God and Angel, intercede for me.